quick, if you're in Australia and still have old analog clocks, it's time to upgrade so that your swimmers can see the clock. The Swim Nerd Pace Clock is now available in Oz. They're distributed by Tim Lane in Brisbane, and I've got a special deal for you. Just email him at tim at swimnerd.com, tell him Brett Hawk sent you, and get yours today for just $7.99 Aussie dollars. So email tim at swimnerd.com and order your Swim Nerd Pace Clocks today. Okay, Luca Dotto, welcome to the podcast, man. How are you? Thank you. Thank you, Brett. I'm good. I'm good, my man. Uh, I'm here in Italy. Uh, you know, uh, we are training after all this uh, bad period of uh, COVID, you know. And uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, we will have our first competition. Uh, so things are getting, you know, serious. <laughs> yeah. No way. Yeah. So, we will see. We will see how the competition will go. And uh, but right now, I'm only thinking. I'm only thinking to you know, getting back in the water. You know about uh, finding uh, the feelings that I completely lost uh, in uh, the quarantine period. And uh, that's okay. So you you live in Rome, right? Yes. Right now, uh, I'm not in Rome. I am uh, uh, in Treviso. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, a small city up in the north of Italy, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, 30 kilometers far from Venice, so you can understand uh, in which part of Italy is. And uh, I'm here because uh, you know, something very bad happened to my life in the last month, and uh, I wanted to be here close to my family because it's a very tough moment for me. And uh, right now is the best. Uh, the best way to get through this situation is uh, to be here, to stay with my, my family and my friends close. And uh, in September, when the new season uh, will start, uh, I will get back in, uh, in Rome, uh, where uh, I live from uh, 11 years right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, man, I know I wanted to have you on the, I wanted to have you on the podcast um, a few weeks ago, and, and you gave me some very bad news. You, you told me that you, you just uh, lost your mother. Uh, your mother passed away, and um, it was yeah. very upsetting to hear that. So uh, I'm sorry about that. How, how's it been the last few weeks, man? Uh, very, very tough, uh, as you can imagine, because uh, my mom, she was very young. She was uh, only 55 years old, and uh, a brain cancer uh take her away from us uh, in just a month mm. because uh, i uh, i left rome uh, in the half of june because my dad uh, on, on the phone told me about this situation that uh, he wasn't uh, he wasn't feeling very good with my mom because uh, she was looking uh, weird in some way mm. and he told me uh, look if you can came back to, uh, to, to, to home, I mean, mm -hmm. up in the north because uh, I need your help in this situation. And uh, just the day after I, I came back home, uh, we discovered uh, everything uh, about, this, uh, about this cancer. And uh, in, ju in just a month, uh, she passed away. So oh. uh, it was, it is, it still is, very tough moment uh, right now I'm just trying to you know uh, get through this situation uh, uh, the best I can and uh, you know start to win my life again uh, even if uh, it's not easy because uh, I mean the mom is one of the most important person in, uh, in our lives and uh, mm. never you know uh, preparated uh, to get through this situation even if they are you know uh older or something something yeah. else yeah i mean I, I know italian families i know the mother is the center of the italian family as well and and also i'm um, just reading about you recently i read that your mother was one of the big influences in you really starting swimming and and, yeah. and so obviously um you know losing losing your mother in, in any situation is devastating but uh but obviously you were very close to your mother no doubt yeah, she was, uh, I mean, 
my biggest inspiration because uh, when I was a kid, she was her that decided to take me on the pool. You know, uh, she was actually a swimming instructor. Mm. She also had a little period of her career that uh, uh, she uh, she trained uh, a little swimming team in uh, Cittadella, the place where I started to, uh, to swim a lot of time ago. So she was my number one fan. And uh, right now I'm feeling, you know, a very, um, a very, I, I mean, I'm feeling empty right now, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Something very, very big in my life is missing right now. And uh, uh, thinking about this and thinking about that, uh, after uh, the competition uh, that uh, I will uh, I will have in the next uh, in the next month in the next year hopefully also the Olympics you know and uh, know uh, that my mother uh, won't see won't see me you know comp compete mm. all around the world it's something that uh, right now is devastating me because yeah. uh, after every race, uh, I was used to take my phone and uh, call her, you know, because mm. she was so uh, anxious, okay, mm -hmm, about yeah. the race, uh, about my feelings. So it would be tough, you know. How do you think? I, I'm not sure whether you had a chance to talk to your mother in, in the final moments in terms of the rest of your life or any depth in conversation, but how do you think she would want you to respond right now in, 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 in facing this as her son and, and looking at what's ahead of you in the next 12 months or, you know, the next few years, how would she want you to respond? Uh, for sure. Uh, she wanted me to be back in the pool uh, right the day after, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, uh, she would say to me, stop crying, think about your life, uh, uh, think about your, the family you are, you know, building up uh, and uh, do the things that you like the most. So right now is swimming and uh, do your best because uh, I'll be by your side forever. That's uh, what, she, what, she, what she probably uh, tell me, you know. It's beautiful, man. You gave me you gave me chills when you said that. I nearly start crying too. But um, ah, uh, anyway, listen. I'm sorry uh, to hear this, and and I'm I'm glad that you know she would want you to respond like that, and I'm glad that you're you're taking that on. Um, it's been a very strange period for everybody, no doubt. You know, being in being quarantined, um, there's a lot of uncertainty for everybody right now. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't think you're alone in that that aspect of of life, but um. Uh, but listen, man, so, you know, just to kind of go back a little bit and talk a bit about, you, you know, you and, and get to know you a little bit for the people that may not know Luca Dotto, you know, you're an Italian swimmer, represented your country at a couple of Olympic Games. How did it, how did it really begin? Like, uh, at, at what age did you start swimming? And when did you notice that you were talented for this? Because... Because in Italy, the, the, the thing you do is you play soccer or you, you, know, you, you go in the, some other form of um, sports, not necessarily swimming. Swimming is not the biggest sport in Italy, but um, how did you get into swimming? Well, I was uh, six. I was six years old. And uh, it was, as I said before, because of my, my mother, mm -hmm. because uh, she loved swimming. I, I remember her uh telling me about the 92 olympics in barcelona even the eight olympics in seoul uh, because even if uh, swimming wasn't uh, a big sport in italy uh she was a fan of swimming mm -hmm. you know? and uh since the beginning of my life she wanted that uh, i wasn't to, to the swimming pool and then uh, uh, also, uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, helped me in this in the, in the, in, in back in the days because mm. uh, she was able to swim and uh, I wasn't. And so when I uh, looked at her uh, swimming with no with no problems, uh, and I was uh, you know still very uh, uh, afraid of being in the water, uh, something changed on me. Uh, like uh, uh, I felt like a little bit uh, of uh, um, uh, you 
and I can explain. Um, What's the Italian word for it? Oh, like like I, I was feeling like a loser. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, from that day, I decided to in my in my mind to decide to learn how to swim, and uh, that's how, how I begin. And after a couple of years, when I was eight years old, uh, the coach of the swimming of the little swimming team of Cittadella uh, noticed me, and uh, it was like Easter. And uh, for Easter, he gave me uh, a little envelope when uh, where uh, he asked me uh, if I want wanted to join the swimming team. Mm. And I remember that uh, I asked to my parents. Uh, uh, what I should do, you know, because I was uh, just a little kid and I wasn't able to have a decision uh, that big for all you for myself. And my mother said, Luca, if you think that uh, you're going to have fun, just go, don't think. And it was like this. I mean, uh, from there, uh, I wasn't, you know, a big talent when I was younger. Even in the first race that I can, I can, I can remember, uh, were uh, a disaster. <laughs> a disaster. Uh, until uh, I was uh, 14, 15, 15 years old, uh, when I discovered, I literally discovered to be uh, a pretty good freestyler. You know, mm -hmm. because I started, I started swim as a backstroker. In, mm -hmm. in fact, my first competition were uh, on backstroke, but in a in an Italian Junior Championship, I was uh, fifteen. Year, I was fifteen. I was in, on the last uh, heat, not on not on the last. I mean the the weakest heat mm -hmm. of the fifty style, and uh, I was swimming the fifty meter freestyle only, you know, to uh, warm up because uh, after a couple of hours. Uh, uh, the 200 backstroke uh, would take, take part, so I just take the 50 like, like a warm up, and uh, I don't know how. I still don't know how. I won the race. I won the junior Italian championship like this, without knowing anything about freestyle. And from that uh, from that race, uh, I decided to you know to switch from backstroke. Mm -hmm. to freestyle. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I feel very lucky right now because uh, who knows if uh, I wasn't I wasn't in that competition in the 50 freestyle maybe my my life uh, would be different right now you know yeah I'm the same man I grew up as a backstroker too and around around 16 I flipped over to my front and that, the rest was history too so me and you have that in common um, What's the training like for, for 15, 16, 17 year olds in, in Italy? Is everybody grouped in and they do, do they do the same thing or do they, do they split you up? Do they identify you as sprinters, as middle distance? As, how do they do it? Uh, I have to say that uh, the team where I grew up uh, was a little bit different from the rest uh, of the other teams in Italy because uh, in Italy, uh, even the, the young guy, the young kid, uh, are used to swim a lot. Mm -hmm. They are very, very young, uh, like uh, athletes of uh, 13, 14 years old are used to swim uh, like uh, 5, 6K for, uh, for training mm -hmm. a lot. And uh, in my team, things were different. Uh, there weren't... Uh, 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 different groups okay they were a situation like this but they were obsessed with the with the quality of swimming mm -hmm. with the quality. so it was like something very very unusual for uh, those years and uh, i i remember that uh, i wasn't you know training like uh, uh, every day also because with school and other activities that uh, I had during the week, uh, I didn't have the time to be like every day on the pool until, uh, until my, yes, when I was 19 years old, I was used to swim uh, four or five times a week. So not a lot, mm. not that. Mm. And, then everything changed when I decided, after the graduation at the high school, I decided to move to Rome 
to swim with uh, Claudio Rossetto, uh, mm-hmm. one of the coach of Italian uh, swimming team. That, uh, in that time, he was the, the coach of uh, two-time world champion Filippo Magnini. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, I started to swim a lot, like six, seven uh, K uh, for uh, every every day. I mean, uh, even twice a day. Mm-hmm. But at the beginning, uh, I was doing, you know, not a lot of kilometer, uh, not even a lot of uh, of gym. I was very, very skinny. I mean, I'm still skinny, but when I was uh, 14, 15 years old, people were, uh, uh, you know, scared about my health because uh, they were. <laughs> And said, but this kid uh, is eating, you know, <laughs> at home. Did you, did you give uh, him uh, <laughs> a lot of pasta or not? <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the, the fact that I grew up in this uh, little team with this uh, weird uh, concept of swimming for the, those years, uh, it was my luck mm-hmm. because uh, when I in Rome at 19 years old, I was ready to work. I mean, I was not... Uh, uh, you weren't uh, burned out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was just ready because my, my technique uh, was quite good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just ready and, uh, you know, yeah. that's it. Yeah, that makes sense. T- tell me this. Why, uh, why is it I found in, in Italy the, with Italian swimmers, they don't really leave much, you know. Uh, y- you have a situation where you graduate high school and then you just stay and become a professional athlete. Not a lot of Italians leave Italy to go to other countries, especially, let's say, America, where they could get some scholarships. Um, why do you think that's the case? Well, uh, well, I remember when I was 19 years old, when I graduated to high school, I, I even didn't, I didn't know that there were the possibility to have, uh, you know, a scholarship in some uh, college from the USA. I mean, uh, and that's why I didn't leave because uh, right now, if I think about that opportunity, uh, I'm a little bit upset, you know, because uh, it could be, it could be a great a great thing for me but by the way i think that uh, a lot of italian athletes are, aren't you know leaving italy because of uh, our families mm. and uh, because we are very very close to our family to our friends and uh, you know it can it can sound weird from people like you from australia for us so that uh, you know you are used to grow up in a, I mean, I think in a different way uh, with your family, even because in the US, or I don't know if, you, if in Australia it's the same, kids uh, are used to, you know, to leave family when they are, where they, when they are very, very uh, young, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Italy, something like this is, uh, it's, it, it, it's still, I mean, the people still see this kind of thing like a tragedy. Oh my God, my kid is going, you know, uh, from in the other part of the world. I cannot leave him, something like this. Mm. Even the young athletes are like this. So, you know, uh, it can be, uh, you know, a very, very bad thing because I think uh, even because I was in Obor with you and I can, I can see all the things about uh, American college, how the things work, where the athletes uh, have training, about uh, the facilities that they can uh, train in. And uh, something like that in Italy is impossible to find. And I think that uh, with the potential of the Italian, that the, the, the Italian streamer have, uh, they could grow, you know, much, much more. Mm-hmm here in Italy to, you know, travel all around the world or in the U.S., you know, to train. Yeah. Do the coaches get very upset or angry if someone from the U.S. college maybe talks to one of their athletes? They get very, very upset? Yeah. I mean, here in Italy is a, is a very, you know, common thing to find uh, 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 coaches that are jealous about their, uh, their athletes. Mm-hmm. Like uh, 
is a tragedy. It's a tragedy for for them if an athlete uh, asks them, you know, there is this situation uh, I would like to, to, you know, to try to have uh, one or maybe two, three years uh, away from you, or uh, I want to go outside Italy. And they, they see this kind of thing like a tragedy. Like, uh, you know, if uh, they are doing something bad mm. to them, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Now, listen, you had your first big breakthrough i guess in 2011 at the world championships in shanghai I, I was reading today i knew this but i forgot that you actually got the silver medal in the 50 freestyle in in shanghai yeah. the world championship how old were you then 21 21 oh wow but i remember the, the the year before i think that the the european championships in, in budapest in 2010 that was, uh, uh, you know, my turnover. Uh, no, come si dice che vengo fuori? My my turnover yep. in a formation, you know, like a breakout. Yeah, my breakout exactly. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I was twenty and uh, I made both final of the fifty and hundred freestyle, hmm. and uh, I really wasn't expected. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was lucky, so I had my haircut <laughs> <laughs> from our team captains and uh, you know I was I was expecting to you know have fun have my best but uh, being in the final among uh, the best streamer in it in, in Europe uh, there, I remember there were uh, people like uh, Filippo Manini, Alain Bernard, uh, Stefan Mistrand for, mm -hmm. from Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, Fred I mean, Busquet? Yeah Fred Busquet I was next to him in the semi-final where he swam uh, the 21.3. 21 <laughs> yeah. I, I swam 21, no, 22.1. And uh, uh, be on his side in that semi final. I mean, I was, I was feeling like to swim uh, 24. You know, something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was coaching Fred during the, this time, and uh, man, he was swimming just in the best I've ever seen anybody swim uh, up to that point. It was just beautiful was swimming. Like, uh, I don't know, 100 times because his swim was epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah epic. Well, well, that's good. So that, that's your breakout meet. So then you go into the World Championships and you, you feel pretty confident then, huh? Yeah, pretty confident, but... Uh, as the year before, I wasn't expecting nothing. I mean, uh, I was expecting to be on the final, that's for sure, because uh, I was growing up uh, really, really fast uh, during the Italian Championship in April. Uh, I swam 48.5. It was my best time and was like the fourth of the fifth time, uh, the best time of that year. And uh, I, I was in Shanghai very confident uh, to be on the final, you know, and that uh, it was like this, it was, it was like that because uh, I was in the final of the 100 where I touched the uh, uh, 7 with the 48.2. It was uh, a very, very great time for me. And then in the 50, you know, something magic happened. <laughs> That's yeah. the 50. I mean, I was uh, fourth after the semifinal. And uh, I remember that... Uh, you know, just before the final, I was I was looking at uh, Caesar, you know, Cielo, mm -hmm. uh, Bruno, that was in that final with the, the with the first time, and uh, Alain Bernard as well. Uh, then Nathan Adrian on my side, and I was wondering, uh, you know, I was asking myself, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Why I am among these guys? You know, and. Uh, I wasn't, you know, feeling the, the pressure. I wasn't uh, afraid to be there. I mean, I was like uh, enjoying the moment. Uh, and then uh, when uh, start, uh, they, when the race started, it was uh, it was just fun, uh, just uh, adrenaline. And uh, when I touched the wall, I mean, you can see from the replay, my face was uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Do you think there's a difference between? Because when I listen to you talk. You know, I, I get a sense that you never at that point in time really considered yourself the best swimmer in the world or you, the possibility of, of winning 
the the championships. It sounds like you wanted to. Your goal was to be in the final, and and you saw yourself as somebody that could be part of a final. But did you ever see yourself uh, imagine yourself as a champion? No, I mean, when I was a kid, uh, I I dreamed to you know to be here in this moment, you know, to be part of the national team, mm -hmm. uh, be at the Olympics, uh, winning medal. But uh, right now, I'm. I'm not considering myself as a, a big champion of swimming. I mean, I won something, not uh, not uh, not as much as a U.S. swimmer or Australian swimmer. You know, uh, I won also uh, two European championship in other freestyle, short and long course. But uh, I'm I'm not considering myself uh, as a big big champion. I consider myself as a a good swimmer that probably uh, could have done uh, better through the years. Uh, but yes, not a, not a great check. Why do you think those? Because we're, we're, we're talking about hundreds of seconds. So when, when I take a stopwatch, Luca, and I click as fast as I can, boom, boom, it's slower than what you would lose a race in. Like you're losing races by hundreds of seconds. So yeah. why, if... Yeah, champion if, or not. <laughs> yeah, but well, yeah. So why wouldn't you consider yourself a champion to give yourself the best chance? If you if you think that you're not a champion, then generally you won't become a champion, right? So do you feel like it's a, a shift in your mentality that you need to make in order to become a champion? Uh, I don't know. But by the way, I consider myself not a champion in uh, the term uh, you know uh, compared to the other because they are one more than me i can consider myself as a champion because every time that i was uh, on a world champion on a european champion or at the olympics uh, i gave 100 percent okay and i think there are there is a different things to be a champion with a lot of medal and a, a champion that even sometimes didn't win a medal, didn't want something, uh, but gave 100% for what he can do, you know. And uh, I consider myself as the second kind of champion, you know. That's why. Yeah, I believe and that too. I, look, uh, yeah, look when, when I hear you talk, Luca, when I hear you talk, I see a lot of myself in you, honestly. When I look back on my career, I see a lot of myself. I, see, I, I hear the things that you say, and I remember thinking those things as well. I remember thinking, I'm not Alex Popoff. I'm not Gary Hall Jr. I'm not Michael Klim, you know. I'm, I'm not Peter Van den Hugenberg. I remember thinking those things. I also remember thinking, uh, I want to be in the final. And most of the time I was in the final. I was in the World Championship final. Uh, many times I was in the Olympic final many times, but the thing that I never ended up getting was I never ended, I never ended up becoming the champion. Now, um, I'm not sure if I ever was good enough, but I also know this, Luca, I never gave myself a chance to become the champion because I never truly believed that I could be the champion. So what I'm saying to you is, that. yes, yes, yes. The last step is the belief that you can be the champion. And, and I never gave myself that chance. So looking back, I have that regret about myself of like, I always wanted to be in the final. I always felt honored to be competing with these guys, but I never believed that I was better than those guys. So maybe if I just believed it, I may, it may be crazy to everybody else, but maybe if I just believed it, maybe I had a chance, but I feel like I never gave myself a chance because I never truly believed it. And so when I hear you talk, I think that about you. Maybe we are too humble. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think, yes, we're humble for sure. But there's also cockiness and there's also, there's also you know, we know who we are. But I but also think we give our competitors too much credit, you know. I think that, I think anybody can be beaten on any day, on any particular day. And I think what we end up doing is we give them credit before they actually beat us. We say that person has done this or that person is is you know when i was when i looked at alexander popoff i i think he's six foot seven and um he's he's you know he's beautiful beautiful built for swimming like i i, I would always give reasons of why he was better than me to myself i'm talking about 
And I, and I think sometimes when I hear you talk, you, you do very similar things. You always find right. ways and reasons why somebody's better than you, but you don't actually give yourself enough credit for why you're really good too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You catch the point because I am like you. I mean, I look at, uh, uh, you know, Laura Manado and I, I say, mm -hmm. oh, he's two meters tall, he's a hundred kilo muscle and I'm thin, just mm -hmm. uh, a meter and a nine. You know, or I look at uh, Nathan Adrian's uh, arms or chest uh, or uh, right now I'm looking to uh, Caleb Dressel uh, mm -hmm. five or underwater, you know, or speed and uh, I mean, <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy for me, but uh, I will try. I mean, I promise you. For I, hope, I hope so. From from me, because uh, you know, I'm not so young anymore. I'm 30 years old. That doesn't mean doesn't mean anything right now. Nothing because mm -hmm. four years ago, uh, a man called uh, uh, Anthony, Anthony Urban. He just you know something very great. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah you know but uh i will try i will try to change mentality even because right now i need i need to change mentality because uh, uh right now in italy the situation of relay is very very good last year in the world championship we were fourth and uh it's not like uh, the past year where uh, i was uh the best swimmer in italy in the hand free so I had like a, a, an easy life, you know, to compete with the national team, uh, to qualify myself for the big meetings like World Champs or, or the Olympics. But right now we have like uh, six or seven young guys that uh, are making the difference right now, you know. Yeah. So I had to change mentality because I need to change mentality because of these young guys that uh, are pushing me away, you know, uh, from the relay. Do you know what Alexander Popov's best time was? 48.2. What's your best time? 47.9. So right there, you're already telling me you're better than Alexander Popov. Yeah, but hey, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Like, it's the truth. You have all the same, you have all the same um, uh, situations as him. He's, he's, you swam 100 meters, he swam 100 meters. He trained very hard, and, and, and he, uh, he was from another era of swimming, you know. What? What era? Like maybe a few years before you? Well, I mean, uh, he won the last uh, world championship in 2003. Yeah, 2003. Yeah. So it's not a different era. I mean, we're still doing the same training methods, right? What What has changed really in the past 15 well, years? myself uh, better than Alexander Popov. Absolutely no, man. <laughs> Only because I swam faster than him uh, once. <laughs> yeah, you swam faster than Alexander Popov ever swam. So it says something about you. Is what, what I'm, My point is that you're doing something and you've figured something out that Alexander Popov could never do. He never broke 48 seconds. You know, As yeah. good as Alexander Popov was, he was, he was an incredible was athlete. He was swimming uh, without cap, with a swimming cap, uh, with no jammer. <laughs> that, was, that was his choice. He had all those choices too, right? He had all the choices. What I'm saying to you is that um, you were the first man in, in Italian history to be under 48 seconds, right? So you, you are special. You are special. I, I can guarantee you. Listen, I've, I've coached you before. I know this for a fact. You're special. And the reason why I have you on this podcast is because you're special. And I know that we talked a few weeks ago and you said, oh, I can't go after Alexander Popov on the podcast. And, and I said, listen, man, you're just as good as Alexander Popov in my eyes. Now, look, yes, he has more medals than, than you. He has Olympic medals. He has gold medals. But, 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 but Luca, Luca Dotto is, is one of the best swimmers in history. I mean, you, you created history when you became – the fastest Italian in, in, in history by swimming 47 seconds. I mean, it's an incredible swim. You understand that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, right now is, uh, right now the situation I think is different because, you know, a lot of young kids are breaking that uh, 48 barrier uh, easily right now. <laughs> I mean, come on. Thinking, why do you think, think that it is? Why, why do you think that when, when you see somebody break a barrier, 
why is it that then then the next generation everybody can do it why do you think that happens i think that this kind of thing happens because uh, uh the training methods uh are changing are evolving uh the, the training methods that they are using when the athletes are very very young i think that they are completely different from the one uh, we had i mean this is my response to that because uh after i mean when they grow up uh i can't figure out that kind a different kind of training of the of the ones that we had right now or that we had in the past years i i agree and disagree i i agree that some training methods are evolving i think that people are respecting and understanding recovery more than ever you know recovery is now part of a normal training cycle throughout the week whereas it used to be train 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 and and then when you it completely exhausted maybe take a day off and then come back work hard again <laughs> but look so i think yes you're right but i also think that when you see somebody when you see somebody break a barrier there is this mental belief that it can be done you know, and then all of a sudden everybody believes. And then in this day and age, you see it on a video. Oh, I, I, I can see somebody doing that as well. So now not only do you believe it, but you also see it in your, with your eyes. And then you say to yourself, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And then all of a sudden now you have all these people believing and knowing that it is actually possible. And so once something becomes possible, it becomes a reality, you know. So I really think that the mental side of swimming um, is is not engaged enough in terms of uh, what we can do, the possibilities of what we can do. I remember when Caesar broke the world record, uh, he went forty six nine in in the suit. You know, they were talking about uh, this what this world record won't be broken for you know twenty thirty years because no human can swim that fast. Well, now we have multiple guys that are right here, and look, the reality is the world record should have been broken this year without without the COVID, but, um, you know, we have guys that are right there now doing it in, in a completely different, um, environment. You know, you have, you have shorts now, whereas before you had this full suit that you could do it in, and now we have multiple guys doing it. So it really comes down to ultimately a belief, a mental belief. I, I, I truly believe that. Hmm. That's a point for you. Yeah. And I, and I think that you discover that more when you retire, you discover you discover the limitations that you put on yourself more so you, when you retire you become more wiser you mm -hmm. know <laughs> yeah yeah i think sometimes when you're in it you don't see the bigger picture and then when you pull back and and remove yourself you can see yourself from the outside looking in. i think a lot of times you look in in from the inside but uh, when you retire you can look at yourself from the outside and say oh there are so many things i wish i could tell that person right now you know and that's kind of the reflection that I have with you right now is like, I wish I could tell you how great Luca Dotto is so he could believe that he could possibly win the Olympics next year. I truly believe that. Well, against that kid, man, it's quite impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's not meaning, I mean, that's not mean that uh, I won't try, like I think everybody else in the world, but against that kid from Florida, <laughs> man, no chance. Or the other kid from Australia that I think that is the best one, Kyle, I'm talking about Kyle Chalmers, and I think that he's the man on the 100 free, because if you give him the dive and the underwater of Caleb, no story. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I really love to see the energy that uh, Kyle has on the last 20 meter. Mm. Really, I mean, uh, it's an inspiration to see what he can do with this kid. I just did a podcast uh, yesterday, which will come out, uh, you know, when the, this will come out eventually too. But um, I did a podcast with somebody that was the favorite in 2012. Who was the favorite in 2012 for uh, the 100 freestyle? Uh, the man that in, in April swam 47.1. He was in Adelaide. Magnuson. So what was everybody saying at the time? Impossible to beat this man. I remember it distinctly. Impossible to beat this man. He is in, he is yeah. unbeatable. He's unbeatable. And then what, what happens? That? You go to the Olympic Games and he gets beat. Wasn't that fast. 
until the Olympics started. But that's what I mean. On any given day, anybody can be beaten. You know, right now you're you're crowning you're crowning Caleb Dressel as unbeatable. But I don't look. Yes, I understand how good Caleb Dressel is. Don't get me wrong. But I wouldn't crown him Olympic champion 12 months before the Olympic Games. You know, I'd say, hey, uh, today, t today I have every chance to beat you. You know, and you, I don't know how you're going to wake up. You, you, you may wake up <laughs> yeah, with, a, with some up. stomach issues. I don't know. Oh, yeah, sure. Who knows? We so, are in the yeah, yeah, you're so right. Everybody, everybody is beatable on, it, on any given day because we've seen it multiple times. Um, so talk to me about let, let, talk to me about 2012 because you you get second in in Shanghai in the 50 in 20, 2011 going into 2012 you must have felt that you had potential to to get a medal and then you ended up I believe you ended up 22nd in in the 53 what happened from going second in the world to 22nd the year after Yeah it was uh, you know a very very tough year for me because in April after our uh, Olympic trials. Uh, I was already qualified from uh, from Shanghai results. I was lucky that year. But in April, I injured myself. I had a very, very bad injury mm. in uh, my back. And uh, that kept me away from swimming pool for a month and a half. And then uh, just uh, a, month, uh, uh, a month before the Olympic begins, Began, uh, I started to swim again, you know. Uh -huh. So I arrived in London, uh, uh, not in a good shape, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, eighty percent mm. of my of my possibility. I had a pretty good relay. I was in the first leg and I swam forty-eight seven. That gave me uh, that time a little bit of confidence, you know, for the uh, single event. But then it was uh, a nightmare, completely a nightmare, because uh, until April, I was feeling very, very, very good in, on the water. You know, I was literally flying, even if you ask Claudio, my coach, he, 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 would, he would say to you, you know, Luca was flying in, in, uh, 2020, in 2012. But then, you know, uh, shit happens. And uh, what was it? And... Uh, I didn't blame anything that uh, happens to me, but uh, you know, I was a bit unlucky that year. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure you you have good years and bad years, and we just we learn as we go. Um, you know, I would say this. You know, as a swimmer, we're we're limited to the ways that we can make money, obviously, and um, one of the ways that I think you've found to be successful uh, is because you're a good looking man as well, right? You're, you're extremely good looking. So you actually had a, uh, ha had a sponsorship with, um, with Armani. Is that correct? Yeah. They worked for five years with Armani. Wow. How did that, how did that come about? And then did, was that, did that help prolong your career? Did it, did it hurt you? I mean, how did you manage being kind of a model, but also swimming at the same time? Well, a lot of people said that uh, working for money or working as a model uh, took my, uh, me away from the pool. Yep. My focus away from the pool. Sure. Uh, it wasn't true. In one. I mean, because uh, being a model, uh, me away from the pool for three or four days during an entire year so it's not that much if you think yeah like you know yes an athlete and a professional athlete she never miss a training you know but uh, we're talking about just uh, three or four training in the entire season yeah but, uh, it was something that uh, i really liked to do because it's a completely different world from the one we are used to being in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I discovered, uh, you know, how that world uh, works. And uh, it was a very, very great experience that started uh, in, uh, you know, in 2012 because of the Olympics, because uh, Armani uh, was the sponsor of the Italian uh, Olympic theme, and uh, he still is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, uh, 
I get noticed because uh, I was chosen uh, as a you know a, a face of the campaign that uh, that was made for the Olympics uh, from Amani. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that moment, I started to work uh, with them. Uh, I started with a perfume, you know, a special edition for the 2012 uh, Olympics. Then I had uh, underwear and a uh, hairwear campaign, uh, and uh, you know. Story. <laughs> That's amazing. What's he like? What, what's what's Giorgio like? Is he a, is a nice guy? Oh yes, absolutely. I met him the first time uh, when I was 23 years old, so in 2013, the day of my birthday. Mm. And, uh, he was uh, so so kind with me because you know I was a little bit uh, uh, on uh, anxiety because I mean I was. Uh, meeting one of the most important person in Italy and mm -hmm. in the world of fashion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he was such a so kind to me. He was so interested on uh, what I was doing. Uh, on the, I was uh, doing the swimming. And uh, I remember that uh, he asked me, how old are you? And I said to him, I'm uh, 23 today, sir. <laughs> and uh, he looked to his, uh, you know, one of the people that helps him and uh, he said uh, uh, a present for the kid <laughs> 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 he gave me a watch <laughs> good work <laughs> <laughs> i love it man i love it did, yeah. did it add did it add pressure for you to be an armani model in, in italy was it was it difficult for them to did you feel like you had to live up to a, a certain expectation uh no not really i mean uh, the only expectation that uh, I had was to, you know, do my job uh, at, the, at the best as I can, you know, because uh, uh, I didn't knew anything about modeling. And uh, the best thing, by the way, I could do was to do to to swim fast for him, because uh, when he talked to me, he said, "Luca, I know you're a swimmer, and uh, this thing uh, uh, won't take away you from the pool." And uh, I want uh, that uh, everything works perfectly for you. We are here just to, you know, uh, to have fun all together, to have a great work together, and uh, to help you on your career. And uh, it was like that because he gave me a lot of help. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, man, uh, I appreciate your time. We've been here a little while, so thank you. F I know English is not your first language, so I, I couldn't imagine doing a, a podcast in Italian. So you're doing very well. But, uh, I literally learned English uh, when, I, when I left uh, high school. I mean, when I finished high school, sorry. Mm -hmm. Because in the high school, uh, my teacher, my, my professor, sorry, uh, wasn't that good. So... <laughs> I literally learn English with movies, video games, or, uh, you know, during the period that, that I was uh, outside Italy, like with you guys in Auburn in uh, 2010, or uh, in 2015 when we came back uh, during the World Championship with the guys, uh, or last year when I had the possibility to work with uh, Santo Condorelli, that he became Italian and uh, he came here for a year and a half to train with us. Uh, so yes, I'm sorry with everybody that <laughs> are listening to us, but hey, you know, it's not that easy for me speaking English. Well, you done you done very well. I'm sure a lot of people love love the accent, so it's good. Uh, listen, last thing, um, you know, we are we're 12 months out now, and uh, what, what is it? What have you got to do? What do, what does Luca Dotto have to do between now and then to? either become the champion of the world or uh, of the Olympics or, or get yourself a, a medal at the Olympics? What, what are the things that you need to do in the next 12 months? I think that uh, I have to, to doesn't feel the pressure, first of all. I don't have to feel the pressure because right now I'm 30 years old and uh, I think that I, I have quite of, uh, you know, uh, the mentality, the right mentality to just enjoy what I'm doing. I mean, I want only to enjoy what swimming will take for me in the in the next years, because uh, I really um, 
understand how time flies right now mm -hmm. because the last 10 years uh, from my beginning of the, my career from now that I'm, uh, you know, 30 years old, uh, I'm thinking about my future and, uh, I don't know if I will be able to swim fast for other uh, three or four years. So I just want to enjoy, enjoy the training, the time with the guys, uh, the time outside Italy to have competition or uh, training as well. So I just want to get back to the pool uh, from September and uh, push every day the best I can, you know. Uh, even because right now I have... Uh, someone else right here that will help me every day i know that's my mom and uh i will also do everything that i do for her you know because uh she will help me even if uh, she's not here anymore but uh she will be here so i will take uh, I, I hope a lot of strength from this uh very very tough period and uh that can help me to get focused and to be the faster I can in the water from the next 10, 10 or 12 months. That's beautiful, man. I love it. Um, I know that you have started your own business as well. You have your own swim school. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm copying you. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do exactly? Well, by the way, uh, I'm not the first in Italy that uh, started uh, a business like this uh, because other uh, Olympians did in the, the past years. But I am the first... Uh, to do this kind of camp, a swimming camp, uh, in a different way because uh, uh, we talk about swimming, okay? We swim with the kids directly with them, with them, okay? And it's only technique, not training, so something long, or something uh, that uh, could bore the kids. Uh, but we talk also about uh, uh, food, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, this year I have uh, uh, an apnea world champion that uh, will help the kids to understand the right way to breathe, you know, that they can have a lot uh, before the competition of, uh, you know, to, uh, to take away the stress from the body, something like this. Uh, then I have uh, uh, a doctor that uh, uh, will help the kids to understand the importance of the uh, the exercise outside the water mm -hmm. for the stability of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, then I have also Filippo Magnini that will come and uh, will uh, have a, a very fast meet with the kids uh, in a you know uh, motivational way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also have uh, uh, during the days of the the camp uh, the possibility to have the kids to have like a, a single hour with me. All the other two athletes that are helping me from in this camp uh, to uh, teach them in a single way, uh, you know, directly to see what kind of uh, error they are, you know, making they are making in the water uh, to help uh, them in the in the technique, uh, something like this. And uh, I mean, this is a nice project. Last year we uh, we we were in uh, 50, 50 kids. Uh, right now, uh, even if uh, there were the COVID uh, and uh, a lot of kids, uh, you know, uh, just passed the, the possibility to be in the camp, uh, we are already in uh, 60. So it's growing up very, very fast. And uh, I th it's one of the, the things that uh, I love the most because uh, mm, I'm looking to these kids and then I remember when I first met uh, uh, the big champion uh, of, uh, of Italy, you know, like uh, Domenico Fioravanti, that uh, uh, was uh, the gold medal of Sydney Olympic uh, Games, or Massimiliano Rosolino as well. And I was 10 years old, mm -hmm. literally. I remember that I was dreaming, you know, when I, when I was next to them. And now that I, I grow up and I see those kids are looking at me in this, in this, in this, in the, uh, in the same way. Same way. You know, I feel uh, the responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, in uh, for 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 them because uh, you know it's a great experience uh, for them, and uh, I wanted to be sure to share 
the hundred percent of my uh, experience to them. Uh, but the most important thing is to, to share with them the love of swimming. That is the most important thing. It's not important to be, you know, the number one, the best. Uh, but the best, the most important thing is to have fun, uh, make friends, you know, and uh, that's the best thing of sports and swimming. So for, that's for great, me, man. I want to teach to them. Well, I'm, uh, it's a beautiful thing that you're giving back. I'm, I'm doing something, like you said, very similar right now, giving back to, to the younger generation. And I, 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 th I find it very fulfilling. I love it. It's amazing. Um, one, one last thing. I, I, I remember your favorite food is uh, pizza with pineapple, correct? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is the tragedy in, in, in Italy, right? No pineapple on pizza. No. I mean, come on. Uh, I can even explain uh, what kind of feeling I have inside me. Uh, that was, uh, I talked even to Bruno Kratos about this thing because he, he actually loves that pizza. Uh, and he said to me, oh my man, it's so tasty, it's so fresh. No, it's shit. I mean, if you came here, if you ask for something like this, the waiter will say to you, okay, that's the exit. <laughs> <laughs> get out here. yeah yeah we don't want you here <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll remember not to not to insult my italian friends and ask for pineapple on my pizza okay no problem uh last thing let's see you have you have two arms right yep. you have two legs sure you have everything you need to be olympic champion next year my friend good luck all right and uh i know your mother will be with you and, and i'll be with you too all right yep all right. Thank you, my friend. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Brett. See ya. See ya, buddy.